Welcome to the Non-Essential Podcast. I'm Steve Gibson. I'm Ben Matlock. Mm-hmm. Yes, mm-hmm. Um, Yep. Yep. Yes, sir. Yes, sir, Rebobski. Yes, yes, um, yes, 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 yes. Hi. We're here. We're Yay. Here again. Uh, Yay. And I'm, I'm really, like, I'm about as tired as I think I've ever been, it's like, setting new new highs for <laughs> for lows for yeah lows yeah um well if it if it helps if it just tells you how bad my week's going is i'm currently drinking a mountain dew kickstart which i think we just talked about a week or two ago about being one of the worst fucking drinks um, out there um yeah i'm not big on them and I'm excited for it because it's one of the highlights of my week so far. <laughs> I did have a Mountain Dew Voltage for the first time in like 10 years today. And I've never even heard of that. I don't think yeah, they sell it in Ohio. It's probably too liberal. You could probably find it somewhere. It's one of those like flavors that they did as like a temporary thing, but then it caught on because because it's blue i think that's the big thing with it. oh yeah yeah i think i have seen that see most of the good shit you have to go to like gas stations to find yeah and yeah that's true and then you got to go behind the gas station to find the really good shit right. um, <laughs> but yeah it's like it's like blue raspberry mountain dew it's really mm. it's really sugary you you feel like you yeah. need to go to the dentist as soon as you drink half of one um, well i mean i used to be big on because I'm not a big Mountain Dew guy. It is too sugary. And uh, so I like to cut it with vodka <laughs> because yeah. that's like the least. Yeah, any other liquor that you put into, maybe tequila, but um, really vodka works best because vodka is so just vodka-y. It's just alcohol flavor that it cuts that, yeah. that sugar. Um, and it makes it a very classy drink. You know, I, I picture myself sitting around the... One of those like exclusive clubs that no, almost nobody can get in with other celebrities and be, be like, waiter, bring me my Mountain Dew and vodka. Yeah. Just well vodka is fine. No, none of that top shelf shit. <laughs> like, <laughs> again, gas station vodka. I don't know if, if your gas stations in Washington sell booze. Our Ours do, know. but never the good stuff. It's uh, No, it's the type of show you like throw into a paper bag and become a vagrant. Right. Because... Uh, uh, gas stations can sell some liquor, but it has to be under a certain alcohol percentage. So, like, any actual, like, you're never going to find, like, even when I say actual, like, Jack Daniels, you know, they can't sell that because that's the actual, you know, whiskey or bourbon, whatever they consider themselves. Um, but there's brands of vodka out there that are only, like, 12% alcohol and I guess then, like, what, 88% like gasoline or something? Yeah. Yeah, and that's great because they have the supply right there, you know? <laughs> right. Some shit on a barrel. So anyway, I interrupted your story about being super fucking tired, well, well, unless that was not, the whole story. It's not much of a story, but it, like, there's a reason this time. Normally it's just, uh, oh, we're just, adults, and right. that sucks. Um, but at 3 a.m., I, I, uh, there arose a clatter, and... <laughs> You jump from the bed to see what's the matter. No, my dogs are fucking losing their shit. And it sucked because it's been summer and it's like the first night in a while where it's been like pretty cool outside. So you crack open the window and get a nice little, I love that. Nice little breeze. And outside I, I faintly hear some voices, which which is when my, after my dogs are barking and it's like, okay, um, you know, but they sound like they're in the in the distance. They don't. Nobody's like pawing at my fucking window. Like, hey, let me in, man. Uh, Yet, hey guys, this is Ben from the Non Essential yeah. Podcast. He's right in here. Are you Ben? Are you the Internet's Ben? Uh, and then I hear what sounds like a like it doesn't sound quite like a car wreck, but it's really loud. And it found it sounds like some shit's like scraping going down. Yeah. yeah, and like I can't even. I look outside. I still don't really know what's happening. Like it's, but then I start hearing like yelling from a few houses down, and these people are just yelling at each other at three a.m. at full fucking volume, and I don't know if somebody hit a fucking thing or what at the time, um, and 
you know, the whole time I'm just watching these people argue in their front lawn and I'm just like, I don't know what they're fighting about, but I hope it destroys them both. Because I'm I'm awake right now and I'm pissed. That's the thing is neither side's the good side when it's 3 a.m. and you're fighting back and forth. Because one one side could be very well the instigator asshole, yeah. but the other side's supposed to be like, hey, it's 3 a.m. I don't want to be screaming in the front yard. Let's just like yeah. wrap this up. Um, so yeah, yeah. yeah. and so uh, you know, and it took, it was one of those things where like it took me a long fucking time to fall back asleep after that. Um, once the people sort of realized they just woke up the fucking neighborhood and people were coming out of their houses to be like, what the fuck? Um, then they packed it up and decided- Which is also funny to me because it's like, oh, yeah, yeah. Maybe this wasn't the best time to settle every neighbor dispute we've had with each other living next to each other the last five years. Um, as I guess one of the neighbors came by the house today when I was at work and uh, was saying that she was apologizing for what happened last night, um, which is nice of him. But again, I don't really give a shit. Yeah, because the only because thing worse than waking me up day. at three in the morning is talking to me in broad daylight. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, like, you know, I'm let's barely, just pretend it didn't happen. I'm barely go. functioning right now. Um but the dude well, I'm was just saying, like, I don't want to talk to my neighbors. <laughs> no, never, never really, if we're being honest. Um, the neighbors, like, right next to me are cool, but I still, yeah, I, was, I still I know, keep I should my qualify, head down. Qualify that in just in, like, the extremely slim chance that the oldest my parents' neighbor next to me, like, happens upon the show. I don't mind talking to him if we, like, yeah. or happen to be in the front yard at the same time. Um, I still don't really want him. I he's a nice guy. I, I, he's a great neighbor. I don't really want him knocking on my door to chat though. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. Um, I don't know. King of the Hill was a fairy tale. We don't <laughs> we don't group up. No, I, I've got a yeah. friend that talks about like hanging out with the neighbors, like, like having drinks that night and barbecues and stuff. And it's like that sounds so weird to me. <laughs> yeah. Like, good for you. You made friends and you're a normal functioning person in society. That sounds like a nightmare. <laughs> <laughs> yeah and so the dude was explaining i guess that this is all alleged this is all his point of view but sure um so they've been fighting him and this other neighbor on the other side of him have been fighting for a long time and one of the things they've been fighting about is one of the people who lives at that house is like an uber driver and they leave at like 3 a.m because i guess that's good uber hours i don't know mm. um I mean, I feel like that's just Taco Bell um, and, you know, bar trips, but... Right. Yeah, I know. That seems like the worst possible... T- yeah. I mean, I'm sure you get whatever they call it, pricing, but... Yeah. You, but you're dealing yeah. with the worst kind of yeah. <laughs> fares. But totally. anyway. So, uh, and I guess when this dude goes out to Uber, he's been moving this neighbor's trash cans and shit, and the neighbor's been catching this on like his ring doorbell camera and like why just to be like petty like maybe it's like one of those things where it's like maybe it's genuinely in the way people do kind of just move their shit out before garbage day and can you know block your car um or maybe you're just being petty and you're like that type of dude i need two spaces because i don't want my car getting scratched um But he's he's been moving the trash cans, I guess. This dude is so fucking paranoid about it. I guess he got up at three to catch him moving his garbage cans and came out and was like yelling, you know, started yelling basically like, don't fuck with my garbage cans. Um, And uh, I guess the dude kind of ignored it and then like drove down the road and then the neighbor went out to move his garbage cans back into place and something out of a fucking movie he looked down the road and that neighbor's car was just down the road with the lights off and then it floored it towards him Uh, (laughs) and the neighbor like chucked his garbage cans toward the car which won't stop a car uh nice thought but no um but i guess like he got out of the way and just like hit the dude's car with his garbage cans so that was the sound i heard and they started yelling at each other after that. And 
yeah, it was kind of, you know, it's just what a hmm. fucking, it's so opposite. So, but I don't but, understand. Like, is he moving the garbage cans, like blocking the other guy in? Like, who fucking, ca- I don't care if you move my garbage can. It's not like, that's my garbage can spot. As long as it's going to still you, get picked up. If you push. If you steal my garbage or something, like, I, that would like be we something. Have, uh, on the road I live on, we have, like, those it's kind of a wide street so there's places to park up toward the curb before you get to the road proper um so you kind of have to push your garbage cans a little bit more forward than you'd probably like um because there's just there's parking everywhere um Mm -hmm. so you have to make sure it's by the edge of the road because our garbage people yeah they just ignore it they will they will ignore it if they can't get it easy um which i can't really blame them for So if you moved my garbage cans in front of my driveway, I'd be pretty fucking pissed. But other than that, I don't care. Like, yeah, just that's what I mean. Like, it must be like you're moving at some place where it's going to fuck up your your pickup or something like that. Like, all I know is like, that's, you know, the story ends with a whimper. All I know is I don't want to be woken up for that shit. It's no, I, and problem. that's that's I think that would make me more mad. Be like, all of that was over garbage cans being moved like. But, and that just reinforces my idea in the beginning where it sounds like both sides are just – both but, sides are bad. Like, but I, I was – when I heard this story, like I didn't talk to the neighbor myself, but I was like, if your ring doorbell camera catches uh, your garbage cans being moved, it probably caught the car careening towards you uh, in your <laughs> and your garbage cans. Probably. And, and you, I guess – that got mentioned to the neighbor and he was like, Oh no, the police won't do anything about it. Which I mean, police, they throw that line out a lot these days. Um, but I do feel like there's probably some assault charges. You could probably, yeah, if you I, push the of, issue. I don't know. I it used to make me more frustrated than it does now just because, I'm slow on the pickup, the social issues, <laughs> apparently, because uh, there's a lot of time. Like we we have clients that be like, "Oh, I got home and my house is completely ransacked and burglarized." We'll be like, "Oh, did you call the cops?" They're like, "No, they won't catch them anyway." Yeah. It's like you're not wrong, but you should probably you still call. alert them, yeah, because they do actually track that stuff, and maybe it won't help you, but it can help down the road to start to like curb this. Yeah. stuff believe it or not and i get why a lot of people are jaded on that but n- anymore i feel like yeah maybe don't call the cops because it'll end up with somebody getting shot by the cops over something stupid like a fucking trash can <laughs> yeah but uh, like it, you know on the on the no, other hand although if, i'm if i'm, I'm the I'm, neighbor I'm, and you send a car towards me i hope they shoot you I, yeah that's the thing I, that'd be the, the flip side of that though because i'm i'm a pretty laid-back person if you try to kill me I'm no longer laid back at that point. That, that That's one of my, like, boundaries. <laughs> yeah, wow, that's, that's your trigger issue? You know, it, it might be unique to me. Maybe that's a flaw to me, but I don't like people trying to kill me. I don't want to die, asshole. <laughs> well, if I, I, I don't know if I can even say that some days, but I don't want to die on your I, terms, I wanna, asshole. <laughs> I don't want to be killed by you, specifically. Right. So and and now I'm imagining a, I think you should leave skate <laughs> where a suicidal Tim no, Robbins is pissed because somebody all else the time, tried. but I don't want to die from you. You. <laughs> uh, uh. So yeah, uh, I I've probably said it before, but I need a lot of society stuff. But damn, I hate living in society. <laughs> yeah, because it's just a lot of. It's like a, that kind of stuff. It's built on this idea of coexisting and nobody can coexist. I had to drive around our city yesterday. I call it a city. It's a very mod, modestly sized city um, to get photos of 11 different houses for a single client of ours because we had to switch as companies. And I fucking hate getting pictures of people's houses, especially when there's tenants that live in it because you're probably like I would be if I was living in a house that, you know, I, the tenants have nothing to do with insurance. They don't know it's being switched. Mm-hmm. So if some chuckle fuck starts in broad daylights, just walking around your house in the backyard and front yard, taking pictures of your house, a lot of people be like, what the fuck? And not real happy about it. And I don't like being the one that gets confronted by <laughs> that. 
So I'm never in a good mood when I have to take pictures. And usually it's you're taking pictures of a house, 11 houses, like in a circuit. I wasn't real happy about. And there was one guy like working on a car. He wasn't from the house I was taking pictures of because I watched him walk out of the house across the street. And I like go to take a picture. He's like, hey, buddy, what are you taking pictures of? Like kind of like he's trying to start a fight or something. And it's like, I'm not going to even fucking acknowledge you. <laughs> like, <laughs> And it's like, and I don't know if you want to try it because I'll be one of the, I can't say, I, I never want to pretend like, oh, I'm going to kick your ass because I probably lose every fight I would be in. But I was in that frame of mind where it's like, fucking bring it on. I don't even care if you're yeah. armed at this point. Like, <laughs> Yeah. Hey, that that changes after one punch. I've been in that well, space. Sure. Yeah. Um, no, I've never quite been in that because I'm very anti-confrontational, <laughs> uh, which... It's funny considering at one point I was going through police academy, um, a job that's 100% confrontation. Yeah, for people who really do feel that way all of the time. So, yeah. Uh, so, but anyway. So, anyway, yeah. that's a. Uh, neighbors, neighbors can be fun. Yeah. Uh, neighbors, neighbors make the, the shout out to all the neighbors for making me do the show. You know when who's I'm really, really not ready to? You know who's really got it figured out? Hermits. Those, like, like the Unabomber guy living in a shack in the woods. I fucking get it. I understand. I would, not, I would not say the Unabomber had it figured out. No, he veered off course uh, uh, say, quite, uh, quite drastically. I would say but, you do not have to hand it to the Unabomber. <laughs> um, <laughs> but, uh, yeah. I just mean the living off the grid away from everybody. I get it. You get like, it. I, yeah. I, I see what you're saying. You went with the worst example. But... <laughs> Well, it's his fault that when you think of weirdos living in the woods by themselves, even like what, 20 some years later, as probably close to 30 years later, he's still the prime example that pops into my head when I think weird loner in the woods. <laughs> yeah, to be fair, he was he, doing it okay for a while. Yeah. Right. That's what I mean. He, he had his living situation figured out. Um, like I said, his life kind of veered drastically off course. And the, and the, his actions suggest that he wasn't happy with his life choices, but he should have been. I mean, that's that's the ideal. If I could afford a shack in the woods. <laughs> but have you seen how expensive woods are anymore? I can't fucking afford acreage. No, yeah. I mean, everything is. That's what's funny. One of these neighbors involved in that dispute has their house for sale. So I'm sure, like, the guys who... who well, maybe that's why like he's mad. He, he he doesn't want to move. He's like, I'm selling the house because he's fucking trash cans. Yeah. Um. But, apparently not, because they were about to get like three hundred something thousand, and they were like, "No, this needs to be four hundred something thousand, which is madness." If you know the fucking like street I live on and the house in question, it's that is not half a fucking million dollars. Mm -hmm. You are out of your I know, head. but these, I, I, I mean, I live in a neighborhood where houses are selling for 450 and yeah, <laughs> you know me, I, that's not that I live in a nice, fancy fucking neighborhood because we've got money. We don't, we got very fucking lucky when, when no. we bought, um, the housing market is still fucking Disgusting. nuts. Yeah. Right. Uh, so anyway. That's a little bit fucking so that's my story this super, week. super long oh. preamble. Um, yeah. On this show, we tell each other stories, usually not like this. Who am I kidding? Hey, it's half and a half. Sometimes we have a 20 minute ramble sesh. Um, yeah. Yeah. But uh, yeah. Just other times. It's the highlight of the, the show. But, uh, but yeah. So. Uh, unfortunately, Steve. we have to get to, to the parts where we tell random stories. Um, sorry, folks, but it's we're contractually obligated yeah. here. By Pepsi. To get back on top. <laughs> yeah. I, yeah, I'm glad that you mentioned them by name because now they have to pay us. I, th I think that's how that works. Except I'm drinking a Coke product. I'm drinking an Orange Fanta right now, um, which has a – it is telling me there is – it is now more delicious. Um, it still tastes like orange soda to me uh, and contains no juice. Going back to my age-old point, it would probably be easier to make this shit with juice. Oh, I we'll see which which one they can like the listeners can say which ones they think uh, perform better this week me or you because my drink has five percent juice and yours has zero percent yeah so if juice helps I should be five percent better than 
Yeah. I think that's how that works. Juice directly correlates to podcast performance. I just, I just, it always <laughs> seems like you're working way too hard to make something orange flavored if you're not just using some juice. I know, because that's like nature's perfect, like. You had to find like a combination of like fucking uranium and other shit <laughs> to like that, make that's the, the next op, of orange. That's the next to Oppenheimer, the guy that <laughs> discovered fake orange flavor and then goes by god what did i do you know how fucking scared i would be if i cracked open a fanna and a blue light shot straight up into the fucking atmosphere <laughs> like oh my god so anyway i do have a story this week and it's not a creepypasta shockingly like as bad as like we've been slammed at work for like a month straight today like the phones quit ringing at about 11 o'clock and i'm like hey <laughs> convenient hey time to do my other job that pays oh. fucking way worse <laughs> so the russian city of st petersburg had been known as the city of petrograd until 1924 the year it was renamed leningrad in other words the city of leningrad was once petrograd now it's st petersburg not petrograd or leningrad so if you have a date in petrograd or leningrad she'll be waiting in st petersburg Da, 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 da. I don't know if you're a They Might Be Giants fan, but that was pretty clever. Um, oh, I'll take your word for it. I, I'm not familiar with the reference. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, you, you I'm said just a happy lot of, I got... You said a lot of words really fast, and uh -huh. I respect um, it, but I'm not prepared for it. And it was intentional because my, podca or my podcast uh, topic this week is not about any of those <laughs> places. Um, but I will not apologize for that opening. The important thing is that during the year 1926, the city was still known as Leningrad, and this is where and when a girl by the name of Zenaida Portnova was born. Her father was a factory worker, and her family hailed from the region of the Soviet Union that is now the independent country of Belarus, which if you're ter terrible with geography and history like I am, that's to say they lived in East the Eastern Soviet Union. Um, <laughs> I've actually learned a lot about history, like by accident, of that area over the last couple of weeks because of just this book I'm I'm reading. It's so fucking confusing because like entire countries like got absorbed and then rebroken up and then re divvied out and like at one point I think the area was like French. Yeah. Um, well, you should probably anyway. just squash it, give it all to me. <laughs> now you sound exactly like uh, Putin. Because I think that's kind of what he's, he's currently I'm trying not, to do. <laughs> I mean, but he wants to do it under the like guise of like it's for Russia. Like I'm not. This shit doesn't go to the United States. This goes, goes to, to ben. ben Matlock. <laughs> the United States of Ben. I like it. Yeah, yeah. There's like a region of like, uh, I forget what what the combination of countries are, but it's called Benelux. And I'm really? going, and I'm going to take that and make it. You don't even have to take it. You just show up like, "Hey, I'm Ben," and they're like, "Hey, we've been waiting for you." We, yeah. Well, it's like, fuck. I'll have to look it up. You keep, keep talking. I'll, <laughs> I'll tell you where my home, my homeland is. So all the confusing places and words there is just to say that this, uh, this girl was born in Eastern Soviet Union, um, in 1926. In 1941, at the age of 15, Zenaida left home to live with her grandmother on her grandmother's farm in the Soviet countryside. Okay, uh, sorry, I got this pulled up. The Benelux Union was founded in 1944 and is an international government organization of Belgium, the Netherlands, and Luxembourg. So all how, three how the of fuck you, did they manage to form that like in the middle of World War Two? So like, like so all three of you, you're mine now. Mm -hmm. They're like the chosen one has yeah. come. <laughs> <laughs> it's so the anyway, first person thank, named Ben arrogant enough to uh, think it's all about him. As the charter foretold. <laughs> anyway. 15 years old, Zenaida, 1941, moved uh, in with her grandmother on her grandmother's farm, Soviet countryside, Eastern Soviet Union. Which means she was living on the farm a little later in 1941, when the Nazis invaded and occupied the region. So good timing. 
One of the items on the Nazi invasion checklist was apparently to beat Zenaida's grandmother and uh, steal her cattle, an act which was witnessed by the young girl, Zenaida. So while witnessing the invasion of your country and the beating and pillaging of your grandmother was surely traumatic to a 15-year-old, Zenaida's response was to join the local resistance movement known as the Young Avengers and seek revenge, or I guess that would be avengeance. We'll go take their cattle. Yeah, fuck you and beat your grandmothers. I'm going to start with this, the latter because it sounds easier than stealing <laughs> cattle. <laughs> I tried Frankly. to steal cattle and they beat up my grandmother. I tried to steal a... I think it was. A, I guess it probably wasn't a cow because I don't know that they're in there. I tried to steal a horse and read that it didn't go well. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so bad at being a criminal in that game. So anyway, she's 15 years old. And she's like, well, "Fuck the Nazis," which is the right response. But a lot of 15 year old, like, a lot of credit to her <laughs> for just being like, "Yeah, this isn't going to stand." So her anti-military career began with a simple but dangerous um acts of distributing anti-propaganda leaflets, um, stealing, hoarding, and moving and distributing weapons, so that's pretty fucking badass, and spying on and reporting Nazi troop movements. Um, but like any teenager, Zenaida was quick to pick up habits from her peers within the Young Avengers, and so she soon learned how to fire and operate weapons and explosives, which, in fairness, if you give basically any 15-year-old the opportunity to be like, hey... Yeah. If you want to shoot stuff and blow it up, you're like, fuck yeah. The truth is, a lot of guns, like, when you really, you like, they're tools, and you got to be careful and learn the right way. But the truth is, a lot of them are mechanically about as, like, like, we have fax machines at work that are more complex than some of the <laughs> Yeah, rifles. that's what's, it's always funny to me when you hear all these stories, and you're like, oh, he learned to shoot at a young, it's like, that's about a four hours worth of lessons, um. And yeah. I get practicing, you get better at it, which is typically what they mean. Yeah. But, um, but the mechanics, the, uh, unfortunately, yeah, anyone can do. Uh, figuratively and literally armed with these new skills, Zenaida graduated to sabotage and demolitions. She participated in attacks on Nazi controlled pump stations, brick factories, and power plants. Um, these attacks were responsible for killing as many as a hundred Nazi soldiers. So, uh, <laughs> she, she really went for it. She's like, I yeah, know. but none of them brought their, their cattle back. That was the problem. She'd kill them and then she'd loot their bodies. I assume like again in Red Dead, since that's what I'm playing. And she'd be like, damn it, no cattle. And they kept beating up her grandma. <laughs> be like, who just blew us up? Talk, damn it. Well, she didn't realize as her grandmother was a boxer and the Nazis fighting him. It was like all like a WWE thing. <laughs> if I was like, an invading was force and I like kicked down a door and like I just saw a grandma like bobbing and weaving towards me. No, shut the door. No way I would confront that bitch. <laughs> Sorry, ma'am. Uh, wrong uh, house. Uh, pardon me, ma'am. Wrong country. I'm from Benelux. <laughs> Who are they allied with? I have no idea. Uh, you, you? <laughs> you? You look tough. <laughs> Want to be friends? Who's currently winning? <laughs> <laughs> so by the age of 17, Zenaida secured a job in the kitchens in Obel, which is still Belarus, uh, Soviet Union region, basically the same area where her grandmother lived. Um, but she got a job in the kitchens, which supplied food to the Nazi troops. Which, you'd be like, wait, why is she feeding the Nazis? Let's find out. To put a fucking bomb in their chili <laughs> or some shit, I don't know. <laughs> the toilets, that's, that's, where, uh, that's where the movie got it from. Um, if, if, like, you were sitting on a toilet and the bomb, like, blew up into your ass, there would have to be, like, that split second before you're dead where you're, like, you think that came out of your ass, right? <laughs> I I mean, if I survived it, I probably still, I'd be in the hospital and be like, you come to and like a bomb. Like, yeah, yeah. You wouldn't, I would never even consider bomb. But why would the, yeah. why would the human ass be capable of this? Which I, to be fair, I have that thought a lot. 
No, I think I'd be just laying there like, not again. <laughs> like, oh, damn it. It's actually. And like, you just, you hear like a little rumbling before, like you feel it. Yeah, that's a pretty good prank is to put like a, not a bomb. A that's bomb, a bad prank. Yeah, but, yeah. Um, Funny but, like, joke, right? But like something that would just like basically explode like a, a balloon filled with like pudding or something <laughs> most people's initial reaction would be like ah damn it i need a new but, pair of pants but you would be really nervous about the friend who didn't say shit like to him that's so normal that like he, he has that kind of output anyway <laughs> they, they come walking out like 45 minutes later and don't say anything <laughs> you, you ever feel lighter after one of those <laughs> So anyway, she got this job in the kitchens, and she laid low for a couple months, because she's not stupid, even though she's only 17. And then in August of 1943, she poisoned food destined for Nazi officers. Of course, as the cook, she was immediately suspected. So to prove her innocence, she willingly ate an entire plate of the same food uh, in front of, you know, her accusers. And when she didn't become sick, she was sent home. As it turns out, Zenaida was really fucking sick, but she was such a badass that she was able to, like, hide it. You know, just acted like there was no, you know, like her stomach wasn't bleeding. That's pretty um, good. Yeah. I, I thought you were going to go, like, she played the, like, the long game of, like, micro-dosing the poison until, mm -hmm. like, she had enough tolerance that she could take a bite of, like... No, it's way place. more badass than that to poison the fuck out of him and yourself, but then to just out of sheer like strength of will be like, "Yep, I'm fine." <laughs> um, and she was able to fake it long enough for like, "Okay, fine, go home." And uh, so she went back to her grandmother's home, and then puked her fucking guts out <laughs> because she was poisoned. Um, but fortunately, she was able to also create the antidote and. Uh, which uh, w the the Wikipedia article just says she ate or drank. I don't know if it's food or, or liquid. Um, whey, it's you know, like suppository. <laughs> probably, probably all three at that point. You're just yeah. trying like plug every hole. That, yeah, I need to it, keep it what's in, like it was, in right now. Whey, I think is. I know it's a protein because they make whey powder. Um, but I think it's like grain. So it's. It, I think it was basically the whole like charcoal stomach thing where it's just like pump so much of this other thing in that it'll absorb the poison regardless she survived um although after missing work the next day the nazis are like oh shit wow. <laughs> yeah she did do it um and so they began looking for her so zenaida smartly left Obel and became a scout for the soviet military um so like she left this like underground resistance form and like formally joined a military like operation as a scout However, by the end of the year, we're in January of the following year, um, they're not really sure exactly when, she was given orders to return to Obel and infiltrate the camp. Um, so the Young Avengers' most recent attempts, basically since she left at Sabotage, uh, had all failed, and she was tasked as finding out why. So like, clearly there was a mole or the, the information was getting to, uh, to Nazi hands prior to any of their plans being carried out and so the military said hey go back there you know these people um you know infiltrate the camp find out what the fuck's going on and then uh, she was to track down the remaining members of the young avengers and kind of like say hey <laughs> here's the problem unfortunately sending a known and wanted member of an underground resistance group to investigate the same people who are already looking for her specifically in the same place where she had poisoned uh, them only three months earlier, wasn't a particularly, like, a stroke of military genius um, that one might think it might be. I mean, it's like the Hollywood equivalent, though, of, like, you rob a bank and then well, you're planning, like, this big getaway, but you just loop around and park behind the bank. Be like, hey, I've got a big yeah. deposit to make. Yeah. <laughs> it yeah. happens to be the same amount you're yeah. looking for. <laughs> um so yeah, uh, she was quickly captured and interrogated. There were multiple accounts of what happened next, and so I've included the two that are listed um, by the always infallible Wikipedia. 
So the first one is that during the interrogation, the Nazi interrogator drew his pistol and threatened to shoot her dead on the spot because she wasn't, you know, giving up any of her secrets. Zenaida still refused to offer up any information, and the Nazi, infuriated that he couldn't get a 17-year-old girl to crack, threw the pistol down on the table in frustration. Smart. Zenaida instantly snatched up the pistol and shot him dead, <laughs> then ran into the hallway and, in the process of escaping, shot and killed two additional guards before the fucking gun jammed and she was ultimately captured by, you know, the third guard or whoever else. Or the other alternative um, scenario is that during the interrogation, the interrogator drew his pistol, blah, 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 eventually threw it on the table, blah, blah, blam, dead. So the beginning starts the same. Like, And, and the funny thing is I 100% believe that, especially with her being a young girl, like the interrogator being so like used to like... Give me, the, give me what I want and then like... Right, and having, like, grown yeah. men that were soldiers crack that, like, you're frustrated and you set your pistol down. But, like, not do even you, th how do you crack? Thinking. You're talking to a teen. Like, of course, yeah. they're, like, you're not going to well, get shit from it. Like, <laughs> right. But, uh, like, so anyway, same same deal. She got the guy's like, gun and killed him. she's been down to die for four years at this point. Like, of course, right. she's not going to talk. If, if anything, I've always, I, always, I know I've talked about it on the show before, and I've said it to other people. I used to – the side of town we used to live on was a lot – you know, any place, if you if you're you do stupid stuff, you know, put yourself in danger. But there was a lot more, like, m you know, meth labs and drug stuff. In my day, we had crime. real things to do. Um, Let's just say I the, the side of town we used to live on is doesn't have the best reputation. Although I maintain everywhere is pretty equally bad. Just some areas hide it, and yeah. others don't. Yeah. Um. And then there's a lot of it, it's a part of town where the homeless tend to be because the the shelters in the the general vicinity, but the jails also there. I mean, there's just a lot of people that society looks at as undesirables. Um, but I used to jog and run and walk on the walking trails all the time, and people would be like, oh, the, the, oh, the drugs, the homeless people, blah, blah, blah. And say, so, you know what? I was never, maybe I should have been, maybe it was me. I never once had a problem with adults, um, no matter how sketchy or whatever they, they appeared to be. Um, and I really fucking hate when people are like, oh, the homeless people. I'm like, yeah, the, the people that are like down on their luck and need like your sympathy and support that you're like, oh, I'll stay away from them. They're going to rape and kill you. It's like, no, <laughs> most of them are regular people. Asses. Anyway, my point is I was never w really worried when I was out and they were around. It's when fucking teenagers are around. That's terrifying. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Cause they, uh, cause especially they, cause groups have, of them. Because they have like fundamentally rejected society they're like and everything it's and built on. they understand that like I, I don't know somehow as adults we get this idea in the head back yeah i can't do this or that because there's consequences as a teenager they they've figured out that not really most yeah. of the time <laughs> um so yeah i i would imagine interrogating a teenager as part of a wartime resistance rebellion probably isn't the cakewalk that you assume it's going to be and I'm sure, again, a lot of that came with the fact that she was female, too. And you're thinking, this young little girl, you know, she's not going to be tough. Regardless, um, all of the different accounts of what happened here after she was captured start with her killing the guard that was trying to interrogate her, which is awesome. Uh, the only real difference in this other thing is instead of, like, running out in the hallway is, of course, two guards in the hallway heard the gunshots and came running in and immediately were killed <laughs> by her. Um in the second version, she actually escaped the camp and escaped into the woods and was about to dive into the river to, you know, swim away and also kind of lose a trail. Because if you've seen anything about Nazis, which you probably should have because it kind of permeates our entertainment culture, they certainly love the use of dogs. Um, so she was about to jump into the river to swim away, but got they caught up and grabbed her. Regardless of what versions you find, find she did get recaptured. Um, but she, you know, killed at least three Nazis in the process. Not bad. As you can imagine, Nazis really hate it when you poison and kill their officers. 
and they really, really, really hate it when you make them look stupid by shooting dead three or more of them, despite being After a teenage girl resting. in custody. <laughs> right. <laughs> um so yeah, she she did not get very good treatment, as you can imagine, after the second capture. Um, but as terrible as the ensuing torture was, and there's various, you know, it's it's Nazis didn't always document the horrible fucking things that they did because at the core they knew they were horrible. And I should point out that other sides did equally horrible stuff when it came to interrogating. You know, you don't want to be a prisoner of war. <laughs> It's it's something to be avoided if you can, folks. Uh, just my my tip of the day, um, because torture seems to be the number one go to, no matter who's got you captured. Uh, but she didn't give up her secrets. So on January fifteenth of nineteen forty four, she was taken out to the forest and killed, um, or died during during torture. Or she killed all of them and got away. That too. So there's not really a happy ending to her story. Um, there's but a, in there's 19- really not a lot of happy endings when it comes to like you know you would have to imagine that even if she says she she did survive she got away and the war ended and of course the nazis were defeated and she went on to live a regular life it's still not a happy ending because you would still got to imagine that even though it's like nazi soldiers that you were killing and that i don't know that you'd ever question like did i do the right thing because of what they were doing you still have to live the rest of the life I mean, you know, there's a reason, like, you know, it's kind of treated as, you know, everything with, like, Nazis and the Holocaust and stuff. Like, yes, that was that group of people, but it was, like, humanity's collective shame of that era. You know, like, that was just, that was a failure as a species. Yes, you yes. Know? And, well, and on top and of nobody, that, just the like, mo- makes it out without <clears throat> mental... And emotional well, and the, just the more intimate, you can talk to a lot of people, and it, everybody handles it differently. But you got to imagine, especially <clears throat> a lot of a lot of accounts. the The whole point is that she's she's a um, Soviet hero, seen as a Soviet hero because she was this badass teenage girl. Mm-hmm. And so, a lot of accounts directly say that she killed more than a hundred Nazi soldiers. But that seems to also be simplifying, like. The the bulk of those deaths were deaths that she had a part in because she, you know, helped, you know, set the explosives and run the sabotage. But it's not like she lined up 100 Nazis and, like, murdered them individually. Just, just John Wick them. Yeah. Right. But she did at least kill this. And my point was going to be, you talk to any soldier, even when you're the... We've talked about this. I don't. I, I hesitate to even say on the right side because war is war. It's, it's not good no matter what side. Um, but sometimes it's, you know, necessary. Obviously I'm, I'm not going to sit here and be like, we shouldn't have fought back. But even when you kill somebody in the name of good, you still killed somebody and you live with that. So yeah, there would be no happy ending, even if she, she lived, although it'd be happier than being like, oh no, she was tortured and horribly killed. Um, in 1958, she was officially named a hero of the Soviet Union and also received the Order of Lenin, uh, which is the highest recognition that they would give, I think, for whatever at the time. I don't know. I'm not really up on my communist Soviet awards. Um, I just have but, what uh, I have on my shelf. Chef, yes. <laughs> ben Alex, uh, friend of the Union. Um, but, uh, yeah, so, so she ended up, what, about... 15 years after the fact, getting, you know, the recognition that she, she she earned. Sadly, it's difficult to cash in on that kind of fame when you're dead. Um, So it didn't do her a lot of good. But unsurprisingly, if you're from Belarus uh, now or Soviet Union, even, you know, Eastern Soviet Union, this would all be old hat because she's very well known. There's like a million things from youth organizations and groups to schools and sports teams named after her. Um, because she's one of the big wartime well, heroes. I never um, heard of her, so take that. Yeah. <laughs> You're not famous enough for us American, yeah. uneducated, unworldly folks. You know folks who Charles Barkley is? Huh? It's <laughs> a real figure. In fact, it was funny because my, my, uh, oldest daughter has a swim lesson on Thursday nights before we do the show. 
And so I usually just bring an earbud because I don't want to fucking talk to other parents. Like, ugh, gross. Yeah. Um, and I thought this time, I was like, you know what? I'm going to, while I'm sitting here, I had my notes all done, but I'm like, I'm going to just like look for a podcast that, you know, about her just to see if there's any cool facts that I missed in my extensive, like three source investigation. And there was one podcast that was clearly filmed by a single guy in his basement um, about her. And that's all I found. So I'd like to defini definitively declare this the best podcast episode about this badass Soviet wartime hero, at least outside of the Soviet Union. There might be some non-English speaking ones out there, but I don't know. Yeah. They may not yeah. bother talking about her on podcast because like we all know this. We learn about it in kindergarten. I bet that one dude actually did some like fucking like hard hitting research. No, I, I some, really don't think so. And then that's <laughs> like some, to it. have some dipshit like me just talk over it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, there's a ton of written stuff on this this woman. Um We've covered a few in the past. Badass specifically badass female soviet soldiers from world war ii because they're one of the few places that seem to have allowed women to fight because they're like yeah there's no reason to not let more people shoot at the nazis yeah. um so there's a lot a lot no, of no, uh, and cool. also like we're so far away from that war now that it, like it kind of gets glossed over like we, it's almost like they started this evil shit and then we won the war but that war had a lot of ups and downs and a lot of like you know, oh shit, like we're actually, like our allies are like in some seriously bad positions. Um, yeah, and and some of it, I don't know, again, this is going to just show how uneducated I am, especially when it comes to world history. Um, fear not, I'm just as uneducated about American <laughs> history. I'm just ignorant all around. Um, like I said, I... To, there's a there's a book I I'm I say read I'm really listening to this one I would never be able to make it through in text um, and it's just this random it's actually one of the like if you've ever heard of the great courses that are on Audible um, so it's more like lectures than a book um, and I don't even know how I came across it I think it was free and I'm like yeah let's just start listening to it but it ties in like famous music composers throughout history and a lot of them I'd heard of some I hadn't but just like some of the most famous music composers. And then it talks about like the history, what was going on in the world that like kind of led to their, their famous pieces. Like, uh, there was one, one lecture on, uh, Chopin. I always say it wrong. Chopin. Um, Chopin. It's just weird. Chopin. Uh, it's bad that I can't pronounce his name because he's by far my favorite pianist, uh, composer. Um, but it, you know, anyway, the point is a lot of it, cause a lot of these, this history came from the, between 15, like the 1500s and 19, in the early to mid 1900s. And it's just a constant fucking state of war and countries invading and taking over rule or just absorbing countries in this, this specifically this area around yeah. Germany and the Soviet Union and the various countries and providences and whatever. Um, so when the Nazis invaded, of course, it's never good that it invaded, but it was by far not the first time is probably about the 80th time in the last 200 years that this area had been invaded by another country. Yeah. <laughs> so it's like, ah, here we go again. Um, it's really complicated, yeah. <laughs> but it's not complicated to say the Nazis were bad and killing them was something that still gets celebrated. Um, but anyway, that's my, that's my story. A teenager that's way more badass in the short 17 years that she lived than I will ever be. Yeah. And if you look up, um, if you look up pictures of her, like the, the most common one that shows up, it's this black and white photograph of her. And it's like, I look at that and I'm like, I'm a 180 pound, 41 year old man. I, I'm fucking kind of scared. Like, and it's not that she's like, oh, big and like scary looking. She's, she's not like a, uh, imposing person by any means, but the look on her face is like, yep, I'm not fighting that. Yeah. No, no, I, uh, I know I, when to pick my, my battles. Maybe I, your grandmother, maybe I'll take that. Uh, I watch too much early days of MMA to ever judge a book by its cover anymore. Like, <laughs> that fucking girl is like a hundred pounds can like fucking break your neck with like one knee. 
Yep. Um, so yeah, good on you. So that's that is a that is a heaping helpful of uh, Nazi killing. Good good job. Mm-hmm. Sure, her her career didn't last long, two years. But uh... hey, you know it's if you win the Super Bowl in two years and retire, you earned it, as far as I'm concerned. Right, um, right, I, and and again, she, in those two years, she accomplished more in her work than I have in the twenty years I've been at my current employment. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah, you know, you only have enough time in life to get good at one thing. They say, I don't agree with that, but that's what they say. And by they, I mean the main characters of True Detective. <laughs> uh, anyway, uh, that's the show this week. I'm. I'm going to go pass out, I think. So, yeah, bye. Bye Bye-bye. Farewell.